presents coverage of high school basketball. Tonight, a much anticipated non conference matchup between the Minnehaha Academy Red Hawks and the Hopkins Royals. From the Lindbergh Center in Minnetonka, John Jacobson along with Ryan Iverson. And Ryan, a lot of talk about Minnehaha Academy this year and their host of stars that they've got three time defending state champions in 2A, now moved up to Class 3A and really. A lot of fun to watch. Well, I, I had this one marked on our schedule for quite a while, John. This is going to be a lot of fun. You get these early season matchups, and I love coaches that are scheduling tough opponents, right? You want to challenge yourself early, and we got Hopkins, obviously historically a power. We got some great talent on that side. And, of course, Minnehaha Academy, a lot of stars on that side. Really good two-sport players, a lot of great football players playing tonight, too. So I'm really excited. Hopkins comes in at 3-2, and two, and they're the defending 4A champions but lost a lot of good players from that team. Coach Novak says, you know, they're a little behind where he's used to being for his team in mid-December. But the good thing is, it's only mid-December. You've got a lot of time to improve. Yeah, and that's a tough thing. You win a state championship, and Hopkins is always going to have a target on their back because they've perennially been so good. But when you lose a player like Zeke Naji, who you can watch and playing on your TV screen at night at Arizona doing wonderful things there, you got to establish your own identity. And even with players like Kerwin Walton, who's a phenomenal player, it's a new role. And and there's a lot of new players that don't have a lot of experience. So it takes time to build that, and we're still early in the season. And my guess is by the end of the year, Hopkins will be right there as they usually are. Minnehaha Academy dealing with a similar issue. They've got some injuries, and they're also dealing with the fact that six of their players, you mentioned two two sport players played in the prep bowl. Well that was just the day after Thanksgiving. We're only a few weeks past that. So they're just a little bit disjointed at this point of the season. Well and I, I go back to when I played uh, John and played in two prep bowls. It took us a couple of weeks to get that timing and to get the conditioning into basketball. So they're only been going at it full strength for a couple of weeks. Battling injuries certainly doesn't help. Like, same thing with Minnehaha Academy. They're being tested early but as they get back into full, uh, basketball shape and in that rhythm there, no one's going to want to see a piece of them come playoff time. Let's look at our key players, starting with Minnehaha Academy, one of the top players in the whole country, Jalen Sugg. Yeah, and what, what can you say? He's just a phenomenal winner. He's a winner. You saw him on the gridiron as a quarterback just leading his team to the prep bowl. Even though they lost that game, he was involved in every play. He's just a kid that people want to watch play. He's a superstar. And tonight, I'm really excited. I've only seen him a couple of times in person. I'm excited for to, to see how great he is. He's a national recruit and even talks about him maybe playing professionally overseas right out of high school. So I'm really anxious to see how great he is and how great of a winner he is, how much he makes his teammates better too. Really excited for to watch him. And for Hopkins, another senior and also a very high recruit, Kerwin Wall. Well, we saw him really explode last year in the playoffs. So we saw him have a great state tournament, phenomenal shooter. He had a wonderful summer, John, in AAU basketball, and he was putting up big numbers against some of the best guards and best players in the country. So he's really taken off. But this is different. He doesn't have Zeke Naji here with him. This is his team, and he's got to do everything for this team, especially with inexperienced players. So I'm excited to see how his game has evolved from last year also. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch this one. The Red Hawks and the Royals. High school boys basketball tips off next right here on CCX. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV.
here live at the Lindbergh Center. High school basketball, Hopkins Royals, and a great tradition of basketball taking on Minnehaha Academy, nationally ranked team. Three and one on the season. Hopkins comes in at three and two. I think both these teams, you're not expecting to see losses on their, their schedule this early on, but talk about nationally ranked Minnehaha Academy, just spotlight is always on them. They're playing some great teams throughout the year. Opening tap controlled by Hopkins. Throwing Walton into the hands of Cornell Richardson. Back to Walton. And he'll hand it off to Andre Gray. Shot goes up, not good. Loose ball on the baseline and picked up by Keaton jo Johnson of Hopkins. Prince of Ligby into the front court. Well, interesting, Prince Oligby is actually starting out guarding Kerwin Walton. So some good size, good length on both sides of the, uh, both of these teams have it all over the floor. There's Suggs with Walton on him, backs off now on the dribble. Suggs looking in, now will pop a three off the iron and rebounded by Walton. Leads it ahead for Najee off his hands though and corralled by Suggs in the corner. Turnover Hopkins down low and Najee with a steal. Steps in the passing lane. The back to back turnovers and it's back to Hopkins. Maybe we still are watching football, John. Some, <laughs> some, some touchdown throws long, both intercepted. So a couple of early turnovers here. Najee above the block on Johnson. Turn and faces the basket, misses the baseline shot and rebounded yep. by Isaiah Davis. Both of these teams were really good on the defensive rebound. You can see it early. One shot, good box out, and at all five positions, there's length and height. And so you're gonna, you might get one good shot on him, but very rarely are you gonna get offensive rebounds, especially against Minnehaha Academy. A leg B dish, shot goes up, and a foul on Davis will go to the line for two. Here's the starters for tonight's game. Prince of Ligby, Donovan Smith, Jalen Suggs, Keaton Johnson, and Isaiah Davis for Minnehaha Academy. Two seniors, two sophomores, and a junior. And for Hopkins, Walton Gray, Xavier White, Cornell Richardson, and Elvis Najee. Two seniors, two juniors, and a sophomore there. Yeah, really one of the first times, John, that I can remember us doing a Hopkins boys game and not quite sure who all the starters were for Hopkins. Had to had to kind of learn a little bit more about them. So, but again, very talented. They're going to take some time to get where they want to go, but this is a good opening test for them. Davis one out of two. Little spin move shot up and in and a foul. What a move. Cornell Richardson with the basket. And he'll go to the line. Well, I don't know if you could have defended it any better. Donovan Smith stayed in front of him, moved his feet, but look at that quick spin. And anytime you get that little reach in there, even if it's not a foul, it looks like a foul. And Cornell Richardson, who we've seen before playing for Osseo in years past, getting off to a great start. What a spin move. In and out on the free throw and rebounded by Ligby. Uh, I'm sure some of our viewers here are wondering where Chet Holmgren is, the big time recruit here for Minnehaha Academy. One of the top uh, recruits in the country in the junior class, dealing with a groin injury yeah. right now. And Coach Johnson said they're trying to get that healed up. You have to get Terry Lockett out. He's a D1 football guy who's dealing with a foot injury. He hasn't been able to play yet. So they've been not only just not been able to get a full team together, Injury wise, but again, the, the football issue, and so many of these guys just trying to transition yeah. from one sport to the other. And it's not easy to do it, just the speed of the games are different, too. But Chet Holgren, of course, got you know famous this summer by crossing over Steph Curry, which was pretty phenomenal. But he's turned into just a heck of a player, one of the top two recruits in the country for his class. Oh, Najee with the finish off the <laughs> dish from Kerwin Walton. <laughs> I always saw his brother have yeah. plenty of highlight yeah. reel dunks last year, especially for Hopkins, and great setup here. Well, just a great job by Kerwin Walton being the playmaker and throwing it up. And how about the young sophomore Elvis going up and getting it? And how would you like to be the Najee family having all that talent coming up? <laughs> 
course, great, great daughter playing, uh, your son playing at Arizona, and, and Elvis making his presence felt early. Davis got fouled by Xavier White. It's his first third team foul, and so Davis back to the line. He's got both of the Red Hawk points so far. Second one is also good. And it's 4 3. Quickly ahead, Walton front court. Backs off on Ligby. Missed the shot. Najee fighting for it, but Suggs ends up with it. Jalen Suggs into the front court. Crossover up to the basket. He'll go to the line and go. He'll get two. Well, two things right there. I thought Prince Oligby did a great job of contesting that three. And his length, when you're able to get in, you know, with contest with that kind of length, it threw Kerwin and Walton off. He was a little bit long on the shot. And Jalen Suggs, I think the best part of his game is what we just saw right there in transition. He's got great height for a guard, six foot five, but he's got excellent strength. And you can see how crafty he is with the ball and then able to get to the rim and use his body as well as anybody. Ansel Suggs averaging over 23 a game. Gets his first two tonight. One of two in. And Walton almost traveled. Now it goes inside. And Suggs gets the block on Najee down low. And now we get a substitution here for Hopkins. Richardson had picked up two early fouls. And Jalen Tremel, 6'4 junior number one, into the lineup. Well, you can tell and those are the kind of things defensively, your rotations, your help that are normally off a little bit, but Minnehaha Academy, great job rotating and covering the basket. Well, that one is good for White from the corner for a three. Hopkins back in front. Suggs down the line oh. and puts it up and in for two. And again, you see that body control. He's got that, qu he's quick enough to beat you with his first step, but then he's got that great body control, able to avoid a, a charge there and had the soft touch, able to finish. Walton is fouled on his way to the basket. You know, that's the other thing for, for someone like Kerwin. Walton, John, we saw him have a great season last year, but you know, with, with Zeke Nagy and some of the other talented players they had, I think he was able to fly a little bit under the radar. This year, everyone knows who he is. They know how great he is. They're gonna get, he's gonna get every team's best effort. He's got a heck of an athlete defending him tonight. He's gonna have to work for his baskets. Fouls on Keaton Johnson, his first. Second team foul, another shot from the corner. This one comes out for White and rebounded by Johnson. Smith bounce pass to Ligby above the block. Skip pass across. Three point try. Not good. That's a whistle on the baseline. Last shot by Demirian Watson. Salisbury, six foot six sophomore. He's in. Out of bounds play to the Red Hawks. Well, do you notice Hopkins has great length, but do you notice how well the Red Hawks are boxing out on the other side of the floor? There is nobody in the paint trying to grab offensive rebounds. They are very good at boxing now. That's one thing really standing out. Ligby's pass intercepted by Najee. Sawyer Schrake, number 20, into the lineup now for Hopkins. White gives it to Schrake, right corner. Walton. Najee, out of contact, yeah. Suggs. Called for the block, trying to draw the charge. Yeah. And it was so sudden. I don't think it was that powerful of a move. I think if Jalen Suggs, you could see him acting right into it there. And I think if he had just played defense, make the youngster in Elvis Nagy try to shoot over him, he'd be successful. But Hopkins trying to go to that matchup, maybe liking the, the height and the size that they have on that matchup down low. Four and a half minutes in, seven to five Hopkins. Hope you're enjoying this one tonight on CCX. Walton pull up too strong off the glass. Fight for the rebound. Oh, wow. What a great oh, offensive board. And Tremel puts it up and in. Well, Tremel, not a you know, six foot four. He seems undersized in this game, but quick leaper went up and got it. And I love how he went right back up. Didn't hesitate, went up strong, able to get a rare offensive rebound. 
Paul here on Shrake defending Suggs on the wing. Look at that last play again. Look at him fight for that, just rip it away, and then has the strength and the quick leaping ability to go right back up. That was impressive play. You know, I wonder for early here, you can see with, with Crew and Walton struggling a little bit in the half court. John, wondering if they can get him in transition before that defense sets up. He's such a great shooter. You want to get him a good look early on. He's, he's really forcing the issue here early on, and, and you want to try to free up a scorer like that the best you can. I always like to get fouled. You get to the free throw right. line, that's a great way to kind of calm down and get that rhythm going. There's a question on the number of team fouls or what the uh, discussion is here. Five on the board for Hopkins and three for Mini High. I think the question is how many on Hopkins right now? And we're set for play again. Suggs to inbound. Oh, throws it away, and Tremble has it. See, that's a great look right there. Trying to get Walden in the little transition there, but I'll tell you what, Prince Oligby has had great defense so far. White and Najee lost the ball out of bounds. Yeah. Defended pretty well there yeah. by Chase Carter, big sophomore, six foot yeah. six inch sophomore, and maybe he was looking at him as he was looking at the basket and just lost the basketball. Well, Chase did a great job of rotating. That's a play, I think, with experience and strength. Elvis Najee's going to just grab it and go right up instead of trying to take that extra dribble. Well, Ligby has it knocked away. Red Hawks get it back. This little oh, fake wow. go and gets the shot up and in. His first basket yeah. tonight. And, and I'd like to see him do that every single time he gets the ball. I'd like to see him even more aggressive because he, you can see what a great athlete and how great a touch his is too. Three-point shot, that won't go. And here comes Minnehaha Suggs. Oh, Locking foul. And and whistle on Najee, it'll be his second. And that would have been big, because that would have been the second on Jalen Suggs had that been an offensive foul. So that's a big-time play. But you can see Suggs, John, he puts so much pressure on your defense. And he's a great scorer, but he's also a great distributor, too. So you have to know where he is, and you also have to know where shooters are, too. <laughs> I like that he said something back to the Hopkins crowd right behind him. I don't know if it was like, you're not bothering me or what it was exactly, but he knows there are always, yeah. you know, every game. People are going to be, yep. the opposing teams are going to be after him, right? Well, and same fans. with yeah, football, too. I, yeah. you know, I covered the prep bowl that, that he played in, and you could see him talking to, to the other you know, the other team's uh, fans, too. He gets very interactive with them. Another steal off an inbound for Hopkins. Another turnover for many odds. It's been a problem oh. early on. Oh. Rising up and hitting the long two-pointer is Gray, his first basket tonight. And it's 11 to 9. How about that? Gets the rebound coast to coast, but it wasn't forced. It wasn't pushed. He brought it to the middle. No one picked him up. It just kind of rose up. Nice in rhythm shot, and he knocks it down. Suggs explodes to the basket yeah. and one. Oh, there's that explosiveness, that athleticism. And I'll tell you, as strong as he is, if you're going to foul him, here's a look at, at Grace. Ooh. Shot. You see how close he was to that three Should've point three. line. Yeah. If you're going to fall Jalen Suggs, you got to make sure he can't get the shot off. You don't want to give him a three-point play opportunity. Falls on Walton is first. Suggs' free throw is up and in. And he's got seven. And it's 12-11 Red Hawks. Played just over six minutes here in the first half. Oh, ball, nice dribble, then ended up losing yeah. the ball, and then didn't mean to commit that foul, but yeah. definitely did on Suggs, and so that's two on wall. Yeah. And, and I love how the Red Hawks are defending him. They are, when there's a ball screen, you don't let a shooter or a score like that have, you want to make him feel pressure, and every time there's a screen, the, whoever is getting screened is coming up, and they're jamming him, pressuring the ball. Nothing has been easy for him. 
And the worst thing you can do then is have commit that kind of a foul, number one. That's his second foul, number two. You're putting an excellent free throw shooter on the line here early. Suggs so far, four out of four from the free throw line. You look at it again. That's a great move, almost a great play. But right there, that's where you just got to let it go and try to get back on defense. And Suggs connects on both free throws. And the Red Hawks with their biggest lead of three, 14-11. Shrink to try to tie it. And rebounded by Davis. And leave it for Suggs. A great size for a high school point yep, guard, isn't it? it? Is. A little trouble here for Davis. Skip pass. Deep three by Jalen Suggs. Not good. And it comes down to Richardson. Into the front court quickly. His pass intended for Shrink. Broke it up by Watson Salisbury and out of bounds. Well, the thing I think that's been most impressive for me is Minnehaha Academy's defense tonight. They've done a great job of, of making it difficult for Hopkins. You, that time you see great effort getting back, transition defense. Richardson's pass, not by Suggs, about six rows deep up into the stands. Oh, good help. Now stripped yep. away and then picked back up. Gray shot gets blocked by Salisbury. Minnehaha with the ball. Quick pass ahead front court to Carter. Back to Suggs. Hopping out on him. Tristan Lee, 24. In the corner, Gray knocked it away. How about Salisbury? Only a sophomore, but at six foot six, another tremendously long athletic player on defense you can see they're contesting all, every one of Hopkins shots and defensively too I think Hopkins really moving well not allowing easy post passes really so far I think it's been a very well played defensive game Suggs for three definitely got that range hadn't hit one yet but he knocks this one down nice driving kick three answered by trouble He's got five points. Yeah, a little spark here off the bench for him, and they much needed. Nice drive and kick, too, by Richardson. He's got that quickness and speed. If he can make decisions like that, he's a very big asset for them. Finney lost the ball in the lane. Back comes Gray the other way, and he gets fouled. Look at Lance Johnson, 17th year as head coach of Minnehaha Academy. Three state championships in a row for the Red Hawks in 2A, and now they'll challenge uh, De La Salle and others in yep. 3A this season. Uh, he's done a remarkable job. He's built a powerhouse here, and they, they've had a lot of talent. But I'll tell you what, you know, everyone that says, well, if you got great talent, you should win. It's not that easy. You've got to get kids with, with talent and egos to put that aside and play together and care about the common good of the team. And I think he's done that as well as anybody. Gray knocks down both free throws. Back to within a point. Minnehaha Academy here will take a full timeout. You look at Ken Novak Jr., 31st year as head coach. I, I saw him in the fall. He, he retired from teaching after last year. He's like, I didn't even realize what time of year it was. <laughs> you know, he's not back in the classroom, yeah. but we're really enjoying that and gave up coaching tennis, but uh, not giving up coaching now, basketball. Now, 31 years, unbelievable. He's. Uh, He's, he's a, a staple in, in Minnesota high school basketball, and everything I just said about Lance Johnson for Minnehaha Academy is equally, if not more, true for, for Ken Novak, and he just continues to do it. He continues to teach the game at a high level. He gets a lot of talent too, John, but you know I don't think anybody brings guys together and holds people accountable and gets the best out of his players like, like Coach Novak does. This just has a feel to almost like a collegiate game tonight, doesn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, just yes. the size and the, the physicality and the athleticism that we're seeing tonight and great crowd for a Tuesday, cold Tuesday night here in December. And it uh, the energy in this building has been wonderful so far. Not the sharpest game played, though, I mean, so far. I mean, a lot of fouls and turnovers. 
Yeah, and I think if you're Hopkins, you know, being down one with, with your best player, Kerwin Walton, having zero points, I think you got to be pleased with that. Had some guys come off the bench and give them a spark, and defensively they are they are competing on every possession, too. Johnson gives it up to Smith. Chase Carter. Back out high as Smith ball knocked away, but he gets it back. Oh, you be careful Almost the lost foul, the yeah. dribble. Now he did lose it. Schrake able to get it ahead to Lee into the front court. Three from the wing and comes up short for Gray. They hustle for the rebound, can't get it. Many off three on one. Johnson back underneath and he gets fouled. And Oligby will go to the line for two. Yeah, I thought Caden Johnson should have taken that one up. He said he left it for Oligby. A nice job by Oligby here, just going to get it. That's not a very easy pass to catch and going up strong. But I'll tell you what, if you're Hopkins, then you want to, you know, rather than give a layup, you want a hard foul. Make the Red Hawks earn it at the free throw line. First free throw is off for Oligby. Oh, it's just you, you look at a Ligby. I mean, six foot six, probably about 200, 205 pounds, only a sophomore. I mean, he just he looks like a, a basketball player, doesn't he, John? And a great recruit out of yeah. the sophomore class, right? In but Minnesota. You, you think about a Ligby being one of the top recruits in his class, Chet Holmgren, one of the top one or two recruits in his class, Jalen Suggs, of course, in this class. So they got an unbelievable amount of talent on that team. One out of two for a league beat, two point game, yeah. nearing the halfway point. When you fill it in with a couple of big time football recruits, and you got a, a nice starting five there. Whistle and a foul here on Donovan Smith on Richardson's drive. It'll be the second on Smith, fifth team foul on Minnehaha. Inbound to Shrake. Goes right to the basket. Oh. Miss. Oh, and he gets fouled. Yeah. And that'll be on yeah. Suggs in his second. Yeah. Kind of a late whistle, too. And I that's a gutsy call and a big call because that's going to put Suggs with his second foul. Still with nine minutes left in the first half. That was big. I love the drive right there by Shrake. Taking it right at Jalen Suggs. Even if that was clean, you forced the referee to make that kind of a call. So very smart play. Attacking the basket. Shrake free throw up and in. Yeah, it looks like his arm came across and, and hit him on, yeah. on the head. I mean, I didn't think there was a lot of contact, but no. I think some. Shrake but again, you, when, you, when you attack strong like that, you do. You force the referees sometimes, and they're they're humans. It's a quick call, and they're not going to get them all right. But more often than not, you will get get that call. Malik B, well away from the basket, Suggs. Oh, and Shrake commits the foul. Got him up in the air, hoping to force a turnover. Instead, Shrake commits the foul, and Suggs will go to the line, and now they are in the double yeah. bonus, Minnehaha. That'd be the one foul, I think, for the Royals, is just too many fouls. You get them caught in the air, and you can see, yeah, that second reach down is, is the one that did it. You had them right where you wanted them. That's where you got to avoid getting your hand caught in that cookie jar, John. Trust me, I got a lot of cookies when I used to play, but you just can't reach down on it. Especially when the game's being called tight like that, you have to be able to adjust. Missed them both, and Walton is back in the game. Rebounds for Hopkins. Lead pass down ahead. Suggs breaks it up. Intended for trouble and out of bounds. Hopkins basketball. Well, we've seen that a couple times too, trying to throw the ball ahead in transition with Jalen Suggs back on defense. And you, you got to make sure you get it there quickly. If that ball hangs in the air, he's like a defensive back going in the air and getting that. So you know, you got to be very careful with the ball. Wall, no throw it up, and Suggs is there to knock it away. Oh, oh and then off of Johnson's foot and out of bounds. A so turnover on the inbound pass, and the Red Hawks unable to convert it into points. Richardson will bring it up for Hopkins. To the baseline, and give it up to Walton. 
Walton will drive, explodes oh. to the basket, misses the layup, and the ball chipped out. And here's Suggs with it for Minnehaha. He'll drive to the basket right at the oh. defender, scored and one. Well, again, just that great strength. Again, you, you can combine with quick first step, but then you have that body and that strength to be able to take contact, hang in the air a little bit, and finish. Watch him go right into the contact. And just being able to hang that extra half a second, able to finish it. Oh, I had a had some friendly words, I think, for the Hopkins crowd, too. I, I think it said, happy holidays. Hope you guys enjoy the holidays, as if I was reading my, my words correctly. It's 15 points now for Jalen Suggs out of their 21. Well, and he's gotten to the free throw line a ton already, so he's been very aggressive getting to the basket, too. Off balance shot won't go for Richardson, and rebounded by Johnson. Suggs, corner three. Short, oh. Oligby right there missed it. Comes back into the hands of Suggs. Nice dish off. That shot is partially blocked off of Suggs' hands, and Hopkins has it. Three-point uh. try, back iron for Merritt, Regan Merritt on the miss and the rebound to Oligby. How about Hopkins challenging every shot at the rim, John? Not giving anything easy. That was a great job protecting the paint there. A number of good looks for Minnehaha Academy. Hopkins just not giving up, playing great team defense. Well knocked away, maybe just simply lost there. Oh, nice pass. Oh, great finish for two for Davis. How about that feed by Ligby there? And I didn't know he saw him. He just flung that left-handed, able to find the open man, and a nice dunk, too, a nice finish. Johnson rebounds the Walton miss. Back come the Red Hawks again, trying to build on this five-point lead. Suggs lost it. Back into the front court for Hopkins, and a layup. Oh. And two for Tremble. He's got seven now. Yeah. How about a frantic pace there? Great effort. Dremel's really been the best offense so far for the Royals. Previous possession, Kerwin Walton finally got a good open look on it, just unable to capitalize. Into the paint goes Davis, missed this time. Pass ahead, here's Walton challenging a Ligby, missed on the dunk. <laughs> Couldn't get it over a Ligby and rebounded by Watson Salisbury. Davis, high off the glass, finishes. And he's got seven for Minnehaha. Almost a steal. And they're going to get a foul on Minnehaha Academy. If that's Suggs, yep. that's his third. Yep. Oh, it is. Yep. Probably one he shouldn't have tried to, to challenge on it, Regan Merritt here. I think you get caught up in the play, right? Yeah. You want to try to make a spectacular block against the backboard. You can see definitely contact. He raised his arm. He knew he got the foul there. So that puts him with the third foul. That's a big, big, big play for Minnehaha Academy with Jalen Suggs going out of the game here. How about Kerwin Walton trying to dunk that one in yeah. transition? That was. A, we've had some athletic plays tonight. A lot of athletic blocks on defense too. Merritt, yeah, oh. second one comes out. And he gets one out of two. 25-21, six minutes to play in the half. Red Hawks by four. Oh, oh pass. Yeah. Ligby. And oh. a dunk at the other end. For oh. Treble. Oh. And a timeout by Minnehaha Academy. John, think of where Hopkins would be without Tremel and his nine points here in the first half. Came in just, you know, not scoring a whole lot. It comes in and he's just been a spark plug, really filling up kind of the point production they normally are getting from Kerwin Walton. But they're a nice job, pressure defense, playing the passing lanes, getting his feet timed up and watch him bang it down for our second dunk of the game, too. What a great feeling. And for Minnehaha, some of these turnovers yeah. uh, come because of the defense. Some of them are just unforced on yep. Yeah, and that, I think that's part of the reason for the timeout here. What I noticed too, John, is both offenses seem to be playing really fast. And what you want to do is you want to play under control. You want to play quick. 
but you don't necessarily want to play fast. And just being able to take pressure, ball pressure. John Wooden. And, yeah, and, right. and, and I had a coach in college, Mike Bray, who's now the coach at Notre Dame, used to always tell us, don't play fast, play quick. And when you, by playing fast, you stop thinking, you're just moving. And both teams, I think, a little bit doing that. I, probably because of the moment of the game, the excitement, the energy. But Hopkins, it looked like, was down quite a bit there. He did a nice job of fighting and coming back here. And traveling whistled by Davis. Nice defense on the baseline. Yeah. Cut off the drive and forced Isaiah Davis into a travel. And I'll tell you what, one of the biggest lessons is you're not going to make shots every game. You might struggle offensively, but you can always play great defense. And Hopkins has done that tonight, and it's really kept them in the game. Gray finds Tremel. Oh, oh, but for three in the corner, and he knocks down another one. Royals back in front. Great feed, I think, by Najee that time, and a nice relocation by Tremel, and he buries it. Davis, little floater on the baseline up and in. He's had some big points yeah, lately for the Red Hawks here. And now will be a bigger factor with Suggs out. Richardson gets fouled on the inside. And he'll go to the line for a one and one. It's the Royals are in the bonus. There's a great kick. You look opposite as a post player. Nice job getting that space by Tremel. And he knew what was in. Look at him holding that follow up. Yeah, we're getting a lot of points here from, from Tremel not used to it. And then Isaiah Davis came in averaging under five as well over that already in the first half, too. Richardson misses the front end. Rebound to the Red Hawks. Nursing a one-point lead. Big B to Carter. And Carter will take it to the basket. Strong off the glass. Underneath foul up. He is up and in for a leg bead. Well, even though Carter didn't get the points there by attacking like that, defense has to help, and it allows great athletes like a leg bead to crash the boards and get that offensive rebound. Gray wide open look at a three, missed it, and long rebound comes out to Smith. Lob down to a leg bead above the block. Nice pass. Underneath, and yeah. get a foul. And the shot fake and going to the line will be Trent Finney for two. I'll tell you what, Oligby, that was a great feed, but that's where he's got to finish that. He's able to get to the rim, and that little jump hook, he could have finished it instead. Very unselfish play. And Finney there with his hands ready, nice shot fake, able to get to the free throw line. And missing on the free throw, his first time to the line tonight, 6'2 junior. Regan Merritt back in, Richardson out. Missed them both. Hopkins quickly front court, trailing by three with four minutes to play in the half. Walton nice. off the glass, yeah. nice shot by Kerwin Walton, his first basket yeah. tonight. Well, and he, did, he didn't have a league B on him, so he had a little bit of that height advantage. You can see how strong he is. He plays at a nice pace, going hard, but able to slow it down, take a good shot. And a turnover by Minnehaha Academy. And a finish by Treble. They were going to call goaltending if the shot had not dropped. And again, kind of a... Uh, unforced air, ball going out of bounds. He ended up throwing it out. Hopkins, in the, you know, playing that pressure, passing lane defense. Tremble able to get the steal. And how about his offense here in the first half? He's got almost half of their points, if not exactly half. Yeah, he's got 14 of their 30 so far. That shot not good. Ball tipped in the air. Oh, Many, great, ha, pass. great yeah. interior passing in the finish. By Chase Carter and the sophomore's first yeah. basket tonight. Well, two quick passes, ball never even hit the hit the floor. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness! With a drive and the finish of the basket is <laughs> Andre Gray. I call that the John Jacobson special, right down the lane, flying through the air. Oh, that gets the crowd excited. Oh my goodness! His head was at the rim there. What a beautiful finish! Turnover on the basket. 
pass missed by Minnehaha Academy here. Back into the hands of Walton out top. White and they'll settle it back down out top with Gray. They got a candidate for our play of the week, yeah. Ryan. <laughs> Three point try, yeah. Walton not good. Rising up high. Yeah. For the rebound was Davis. Here's Smith now. Oh, quick crossover yeah. into the lane, yeah. shot up, and he'll go to the line for two. Let's take a look at this. this. This might have to be submitted for a top ten. Look at him go up, gather himself. Watch how high he gets, John. Oh my gosh. That was in the half court too. That wasn't like that was in transition. Look at the reaction from the bench. We got CPR <laughs> going on the baseline. <laughs> that was nasty. First one off. <laughs> Trying to tie it up. And that one comes out. Ball tipped around the league. B gets it. Gather himself back up now. He'll pass it back out to Carter. Smith, three ball oh. is good. <laughs> this is the two free throws and then ends up sticking the three pointer. But how about a Ligby there on the great offensive rebound? Oh. Trying to throw it down off the offensive rebound was White on the missed three by Merritt. Couldn't get it to go, but got some oohs and odds up. Another three. This one rattles out for Smith. Good save on the play by White. To get the rebound for Hopkins. Oh, a nice save right there by by Merritt. Here's Gray for three. That's not good. And a rebound yep. comes down to Keaton Johnson. A minute and a half to go now in the first half. Red Hawks with the basketball up by two. I feel like some quick shots here. The last few possessions, some quick three pointers. Carter's great pass yep. down low. Insist in Salisbury with his first basket tonight. We well, always credit the passer for seeing it, but you also got to credit the cutters. Great job by Salisbury getting to the rim, finding the opening. Steal by Smith, and he'll go to the line for two. Creates the contact and draws the foul on Tremel, and Donovan Smith will go back to the line. Yeah, you just can't lose sight of your guy, but how about the vision by Carter? Throwing that ball right next to the defender's ear. And a nice job by Salisbury getting in that position, catching, going right up. I'll tell you, Minnehaha Academy, as many turnovers as they've had and missed shots, I think by their way, their ability to get to the rim, draw fouls, they have shot a lot of free throws in this first half. They are 10 of 19 wow. so far. So a lot of missed points, a lot of points left up on the board for Minnehaha, but they certainly have gotten there a lot. Yeah, Trouble this, out with the second foul, excuse me. No, right. I was just going to say, this could be a double-digit lead here for Minnehaha Academy if they were knocking their free throws down. But as a coach, you love that. You're not That means you're not settling necessarily for threes. You're attacking that basket aggressively, putting pressure on the defense. Tristan Lee back in, has the basketball for Hopkins. Under a minute to go. Red Hawks with their biggest lead right now at five. White, Johnson aggressively, defensively comes out on him. Oh. Nice floater up and in. Oh. Tremel with the basket. <laughs> Good, great cut, good spacing, and a heads-up play. You've got to hit that cutter in the right spot. And thank goodness for Hopkins. Tremel with a huge first half added on to his total. This ball in the front court. Shrake has it for Hopkins, and he's fouled. Watson Salisbury picks up his second foul. You know, and how many times, too, John, have we seen where that ball is just loose right around half court? Hopkins winning the sprint to the loose ball. And a nice job by Shrake there, going up on the left side, trying to finish on the right side, able to draw contact. They get Suggs back for offense here. Put him in with 22 seconds left. And 
Isaiah Davis also back in. Drake misses on the second one. And one last chance for the Red Hawks. Suggs will bring it up here with down to 15 seconds to go. Under 10. Three seconds. Suggs pull up from 15. Not good. Ball tapped in the air, and that'll be the end of the first half. Good close first half of basketball here tonight at the Lindbergh Center. Jalen Suggs limited the last several minutes with uh, three fouls. Missed on that last jumper try, but he's uh, put up the points for his team to lead them to a two-point lead at halftime at 37 to 35. Ryan Iverson is standing by now with Ken Novak Jr. Hey, Coach, first half there was what a, what a game with a bunch of athletes out on the floor. I thought defensively you guys were really good, with the exception of the fouls. What did you think? You know, we've got to really make sure we close space on Suggs. We're giving him too much room. I thought our, our sinks and our fill downs were late a couple times. We've given a couple second shots that should not be taking place. That kills you. Um, offensively, we just not uh, not extend the possession a little bit. we got to extend a little bit. We're Cur too quick. Kerwin Walden only two points, but yet you're still in this game. Other people have picked up the role. Are you happy with that? You know, yeah, yeah. we got to get him going, though. My guys right now, we haven't worked enough on it, but we got to start screening for him, getting him some more shots. Um, we haven't done that enough, so. How fun is this? So, you know, five games into the game, you got a packed house here, great energy, a lot of great players on the floor. Are you having fun? Uh, you know what? I'll yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll All see right. what happens. Take Thanks, care. Coach. Yeah. All right, back to you, John. Thanks, Ryan. We'll hear from Coach Lance Johnson of Minnehaha Academy before the start of the second half. Red Hawks 37, Royals 35. High school basketball tonight at CCX from the Lindbergh Center. We're back with our intermission, the second half of play after this. Oh, Scott. Hey. I'm heading out, man. You want to ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. Oh, you know what? I was just in there. The line is like 10 people long. You know, I think I'll just... Dude, are you okay? You wouldn't believe what I was just thinking. I, I am definitely buzzed. Yeah. I think I will take this, and I will take that ride home. Smart man. Did you see how that dog was looking at me? Thirty-seven, thirty-five. Mini High Academy leads Hopkins. Well, the Hopkins boys obviously a great basketball program. So too the Hopkins girls team, state champions last year, ranked number one, unbeaten this year. And right now, Ryan Iverson standing by with Paige Beckers. Well, I have a very uh, special halftime guest here, uh, Miss Paige Beckers from the Hopkins girls basketball team. Paige, what's your thoughts here? Put on your analyst hat. What do you see here going on in the first half? It's a really good game, but they need to stop fouling. I mean, there hasn't been a pretty good pace to the game just because they've been fouling so much. Uh, Jalen's gotten in foul trouble. I think Hopkins has turned it turned uh, Mini Haha -ha over pretty well, and I'm excited for the second half. So I think they were 10 or 11 for 20 from the free throw line. If you went to the free throw line 20 times in one half, what would you be out of the out of 20? We're going to have to say 20 for 20. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I wanted to ask you, so we got, you know, Chet Holmgren, obviously a big-time recruit. We got a... Jalen Suggs, you got Kerwin Wall, you got a lot of big time players. For you, as someone who's a big time player, big time recruit, do you guys know each other? Do you talk a lot? Do you work out together? What's that relationship like with some of the other best players, girls or boys, in the state? No, yeah, I'm really close with Chet, Jalen, Kerwin. I worked out with all of them, and it's just that 
bond of us all being from Minnesota. I think Minnesota basketball is pretty slept on. So just coming close and just building good relationships with each other and just trying to spread uh, Minnesota basketball across the country is what we're trying to do. Obviously, you're going to Connecticut uh, after this season. How do you balance with, hey, I want to enjoy my last year with, in high school with my friends and family, but also you know, keeping an eye on UConn and knowing that that's coming. Is that hard to do for you? Yeah, I mean, I at the beginning of the season, I kind of worried about UConn a little bit, but then Coach Dino told me, don't worry about it at all. Just enjoy your senior season, and that's what I'm trying to do because after this high school season, basketball becomes really real. So I'm just trying to enjoy it and have fun with my girls. Talking about Hopkins girls, you guys are ranked number one in the state. You also have Wyzetta that's going to be really good this year again. What do you see as the biggest obstacle that you guys potentially repeating as state champions? Uh, I think it for us it's just not getting complacent. I mean, our closest game so far has been 25 points, so we just got to keep working hard and not letting all the tension and outside voices get to us. And we have a really tough stretch coming up with Chaska, Park Center, and then Aquinas, a team from Wisconsin. So just getting over that hump and dealing with adversity is – I think what will make us stronger. All right, two more questions for you. One, you spent some time uh, Under Armour with Chet Holmgren out there and with, with uh, Steph Curry. Tell us a little bit, a story or something about Steph Curry and your encounters with him. Uh, probably when I was standing in the corner, Chet had the ball against Steph. Steph was guarding Chet. And Chet hit, uh, hit Steph with one of his moves, and he went up and dunked it, and I was just standing in the corner like, <laughs> I was like, wow, Chet, that was really good. It was really good. How'd you shoot? Did you shoot against Curry at all? Yeah, I did. I came up one short. It was a really good test, but I mean, Steph Curry's a, a decent shooter, so I guess I'll just, I'll all take the L. Who's the best boys player in the state of Minnesota right now, if you had to pick one? Uh, my guy, Jalen Sucks. <laughs> right. Thanks a lot for your time. Best of luck to you. We'll see you a couple times here on CCX, but we always look forward to it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Paige. Back to you, John. All right. Thanks very much. Ryan, thanks to Paige Beckers and that uh, outstanding Hopkins girls basketball team. You'll be able to see them live on CCX December 28th, 7 p.m. against Park Center, two ranked teams. Hopkins state champions of both boys and girls in 2019. Hopkins boys tonight trailing Minnehaha Academy 37-35. Take a break, we'll look at some first half highlights and stats. We continue with our coverage here on CCX. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. They both keep me motivated to go to school, and they see that if I do it, like they can do it too, you know? I feel that everything's possible. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. You told me not to talk to strangers. You told me not to cross the street without looking both ways. You told me not to touch the stove. You told me not to do drugs. You told me not to drink and drive. You gave me so many messages about how to stay safe. Why didn't you keep me safe by properly storing your gun? My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. John Jacobson, Ryan Iverson back, 37-35, Minnehaha Academy leading Hopkins. Red Hawks number one in class 3A, Hopkins number seven in 4A entering play this week. Look at some highlights from the opening half of play here tonight at the Lindbergh Center. Ryan was seeing it, some outstanding athletic wow. plays, as you mentioned with uh, Ken Novak. There was one right there with uh, Cornell Richardson getting the basket of the foul. The dunk early for Elvis Naji off the feed from Kerwin Walton. And some good shooting too and good balance for Hopkins. Xavier White knocking down the baseline three and Jalen Suggs showing off his NBA range too. That was from way deep. 
Suggs going to the basket there for two. He had 15 points there in the first half. And you saw Hopkins going to the line, or Minnehaha mean, Academy going to the line quite a bit because of the Hopkins fouls. And Hopkins able to counter. Jalen Tremble had a huge game off the bench and able to knock down some of those baskets. And then that great hammering dunk by Gray. So our halftime score is 37-35. We're going to go back courtside. Ryan Iverson standing by now. Hey, what did you think there in the first half? Uh, too many turnovers, for sure. I think we had 11, and I think we were something like 11 of 21 from the free, th uh, free throw line. So that, that really hurt us. What do you guys got to do to win this game here in the second half? Not turn the ball over and make free throws. <laughs> well, you had to be proud to over 20 free throw attempts. It means your kids are attacked. We to the basket. That was great. And, uh, yeah, we were getting to the line, but we got to hit those. So Awesome. Well, good luck in the second half. Good thanks, luck. Coach. Back to you, JJ. All right. Thanks very much. Leading scorer so far in the game. We mentioned for Mini High Academy, Suggs with 15 points. Trummel off the bench with 16 points. Had a huge game here tonight for the Hopkins Royals. So Ryan, you, I think that lays it out very well for Mini High Academy. Cut down on the, the turnover, especially the unforced ones, and then knock down some of those free throw attempts. For Hopkins, what's the, the key for them? Yeah, I just think for Hopkins, they gotta they gotta find a way to get Crew and Walton some easy looks. They gotta run some plays, get him, you know, in some easy looks where he can get a rhythm going. And I think defensively, they keep doing what they're doing and do it without falling if you can. Suggs misses, gets another try at it, puts it up and in, and is fouled. <laughs> kind of the same thing we saw in the first half, and I, I like what Minnehaha Academy did there, going four round one, going right to Jalen Suggs down low. And he went right up. He missed it, but able to have that quick jump, able to go get it. Go right back up and draw another foul. That was on Cornell Richardson, his third. Missed on the free throw, so another missed free throw opportunity for Minnehaha Academy. Najee had the rebound. Richardson to White, now into the hands of Walton. And to tack off the dribble into the lane, and he gets fouled and go to the line for two. What I like that he did that time, Walton, he didn't settle for a jump shot. He's got a great first step. He's a great athlete. He's quick as heck, too. And that time he just went through the contact. I think that's what he's going to have to do because a Ligby John with his length is going to make it tough for you to shoot jump shots. He's going to contest shots really, really well. So if, if Kerwin Walton can use his shot as a weapon, fake, Get a half step, able to get to the rim like that, draw a foul. And I always think as a scorer, if you can get to that free throw line, see that ball go in a couple of times, that just helps your rhythm. Thirty-nine, thirty-seven, Redhawks. Walton knocking down both free throws. Oh, great spin yep. move by Suggs. Oh, and he missed the shot. Yep. Richardson yep. attacks and ties it up for Hopkins. Well, Donovan Smith did not should stop that drive. No one helped. No one picked him up. That's rule one. Stop the basketball. And that's a, one of the easiest baskets Hopkins is going to get all night long. Here's Suggs with the basketball again. Drives on Gray. Kicks it out to the corner. Smith three from there is good. Made a three in the first half. Knocks one down here early in the second. Redhawks back in front. Najee just off the block. On Johnson. Pass off of Walton's hand, but skips all the way to Gray. Or to White, rather. And yeah, that's where Najee's got a couple of height, a couple of inches in the height advantage. You want to see him utilize that, use his length. White into Gray. They swipe at the ball, and now we're going to foul, I think, on Smith. It's the third foul on Donovan Smith. Inbound pass here for Hopkins. Najee open. Missed on the shot. Walton trying to tip it to a teammate, but Suggs has it. 
ahead to Johnson up. Not good, and Sarks follows up with a dunk. And it goes to Elvis Naji. Back out, three try. Comes up short for White. Rebound to Davis. Davis ahead to Johnson. And oh, a nice dunk pass. from Lingby. A timeout for Hopkins. Red Hawks get running here early in the second half. Oh, and you can see how good they are, John, in transition. They do a great job of throwing up ahead. Jalen Suggs throws it ahead. Caden Johnson on this miss. And that's one of those you dream of. That ball hanging right there. Jalen able to go up and hammer it down. The next play, a great pass by Caden Johnson over to Ligby. Watch him bury this one, too. Just athletes all over the floor. I'll tell you, Hopkins' defense in the half court has been phenomenal. And I think Minnehaha Academy has done two things really well here in the second half, John. One, they're posting up Jalen Suggs down low. And two, if they can get out and run in transition, they are so good. Reminder of our CCX play of the week. Each week we pick four top plays from the top from the previous week. And you can vote on it by going to our website at ccxmedia.org. Click on the sports tab and then go to play of the week. It's brought to you by Chick fil A of Maple Grove. We've so seen they, some plays uh, of the week was, tonight already. I was going to say, which one would you vote right. for so far tonight? There's been a couple. A couple of nice dunks. Was it? I think we was it Andre Gray that had that yes. big dunk in the first half. Uh, Suggs with the tip dunk, and that, that last one too by Aligbe, very impressive. So we've had a couple of choices tonight. Forty-six thirty-nine. Red Hawks with their biggest lead of the night. Let's we'll see how the Royals respond. 7-0 run here for Minnehaha. Walton backs it out now. He starts to drive on Caden Johnson's play. Great defense on him. Johnson floats it up. Now she's trying for the tip. Can't get it. Here come the Red Hawks again. Davis up and in for two. They're getting everyone involved here in the second half, Ryan. Well, Isaiah Davis, six foot three. He's kind of the untalked about athlete on this group but he's had a couple of big time athletic plays and time a little double clutch finish gray rises up that three won't go rebounded by davis back into the hands of suggs lay it up oh and that one missed on the don't try for a ligby back comes hopkins richardson for Najee's pass intercepted by suggs too far for a ligby another turnover Ligby going hard into that end bleachers there. Hopkins basketball. You know, and you think about it too, Minnehaha Academy, there's two great examples of the missed alley oop and then the turnover. You convert that, this is a this is a 13-point game. So Minnehaha Academy is explosive as they are. They've made just enough turnovers where they've kept Hopkins in this game. Nine point Red Hawks lead. Walton the three. Not good. Rebounded by Suggs. Well, he is all over the court, yeah. isn't he? Both ends of the court. Now dishes off to the corner. Open three. Won't go. And the rebound pulled down by Regan Merritt. What I like too is Jalen Suggs doesn't force it too. He makes the right play a lot of the times. Shrake spins, gives it back out to Tremel at 16 points there in the first yeah. half. Naji skip pass across Merritt three not good Naji fights for the rebound lost it on the floor and then gets fouled by Johnson I haven't talked about Keaton Johnson much today number two one of the top football recruits in the state he will announce his uh, decision on college tomorrow at his signing and Minnesota one of the teams with a lot of really good programs yeah. Wisconsin LSU among the teams is uh, he's considering well, nice to have uh, options like that, right? Well, you, you, you're LSU, and for me, that's uh, that's in a caliber all on its own. What a chance to win a national champion this championship this year! But yeah, this Minnehaha team was a great football story. Obviously, last year won the prep bowl. This year, that agonizing defeat there at the last play of the game. But they got a lot of very talented players. Terry Lockett, who 
is not playing tonight with the injury, is going to Michigan State. So Jalen Suggs, of course, got heavily recruited for football as well. So a lot of great athletes, a lot of two-way athletes on this team. Suggs has not announced his uh, decision yet. Apparently planning to in January. Gets the ball here, puts the shot up. Not good. Follow up, oh. try up and in. For two for Watson Salisbury, and he draws the foul. Huh. Well, Salisbury, you just you haven't heard much about him, but six foot six, sophomore, and you can see how aggressive he plays, how long he is too. That was not an easy finish. Watch him go get this ball through contact and still have the wherewithal to get that ball up on the rim, rolling around. That was a nice finish. Ball's on Walton, his third. And we knocks down the free throw. Ten point lead here for Minnehaha Academy. Walton, tough shot. He gets contact. We'll go to the line for two. Well, you can just see they're not giving anything easy to Kerwin Walton. He is having to work. Time got Sugg switched out on him. And I think he, he likes that matchup because he doesn't have that length that Ligby is giving him. That time he's driving. Nice job by Carter trying to take that charge, but still nothing easy for Kerwin Walton. You could tell that was the, the Red Hawks game plan tonight. Following Carter is his second. And Walton knocks down both free throws. He's got six points in the game. Four of them in here in the second half on free throws. Caden Johnson front court for the Red Hawks. Well, you just get the field down eight. They're going to need Kerwin Walton to probably finish this game with 18 to 20 points. Suggs can't get it to go. Najee rebounds and he gets fouled. And undercut just a little bit by Chase Carter is going to pick up the foul. It'll be his third. It's not going to show up in the, the stats or anything, John, but Elvis Naji with that rebound, knew he was fouling, able to still throw it up in midair. That was a really remarkable play. But now you can see Minnie High Academy with five early fouls to see if Hopkins could take advantage and maybe get into that bonus early on. Shrake open, missed on the three. It was a good look, just couldn't get it to go. They get the offensive rebound ball, tipped around, turnover by Hopkins. Johnson for Carter. Offensive foul, it's going to be four on Chase Carter. Picked up three in a hurry here. Yeah, I'll tell you, that's not an easy play. Merritt does a nice job of standing in there. Carter's a big kid, too, taking that hit and momentum. That was a nice play on defense. That's team defense right there. Chase Carter, whose dad, Randy, played for the University of Minnesota. Yep. Really good player uh, on the bench, one of the assistant coaches for Minnehaha Academy. But uh, now we'll have to sit with the four fouls. A little opportunity here for Hopkins. And Walton brings the three points closer with his first three. We talked about on the pregame. He had a big postseason last year with threes. And Suggs answers with his second three of the night for Minnehaha. And Walton that time got a good look. Got some good arc on it, too. Nice pass. Nice dish off. Najee misses, but he's fouled. And Elvis Najee to the line for two. Great feed by Walton, too, drawing the help. Dumps it off. Najee that time goes strong. Fouls on Trent Finney, his first. First free throw up and in for Najee. You know, kind of interesting from a psychological standpoint, John. You, you, Kerwin Walton hits his first three. And within about two and a half seconds on the other end, Jalen Suggs answers it, kind of to say, all right, you got yours. I'm going to show you I'd get mine, too. Najee one on a two, rebound for a Ligby. Don't be surprised to see him pull again. Pull up, gets knocked away by Schrake. Loose ball into the hands of Smith. 
Nice drive, dish to Oligby, and he gets fouled. That was a good play by yep. Watson Salisbury to find this guy coming down the lane and set him up. What, what I love, John, in high school basketball is how hard these kids are attacking the basket, but then I love how hard the defense is. They are not giving up layups. They are fouling. They are aggressively trying to protect their rim. Both teams doing a really nice job at just not giving anything easy. This is kind of an old school physical basketball game. It's been fun to see and to sit up close and to watch it. Why do you take so long to show your face off? Second one not good. And then Hopkins with the rebound. They trail by eight. Long three. Trouble knocks it down. His first points here in the second half. He's got 19 on the night. Back at the other end. Not good, but the follow-up by Finney is up and in as he got the offensive board off the Watson Salisbury miss. With Miniha answering right back. Well, that's going to be four. Great gets fouled by Suggs. Foul on the baseline there. Shrake started to move. Ooh, that's big. Oh, yeah, yeah. you can see the hands yeah. are out of there. So Jalen Suggs is, 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 is he normally a very smart, intelligent basketball player. That's where you just got to try to eliminate that. You got to know how valuable you are to your team, and he does. Frustrated with that. But I'll tell you, Hopkins doing kind of switching the roles here in the second half, drawing eight fouls here with 11 and a half minutes left. Going to be shooting the bonus and double bonus for a significant amount of time. If I'm them, I'm attacking that basket, forcing Minnehaha Academy to either to guard me or foul me. Eight out of nine so far yeah. from the free throw line, too. Yeah, you, you know, you heard Coach Johnson say, we got to make free throws. On, on the flip side, Hopkins has made their free throws. So just kind of when it looked like Minnehaha might pull away here, John, we got ourselves a ball game. Five-point game now. It was ten. And Suggs now out of the game. Yeah. Smith off to Keaton Johnson right wing Tremble right on him Johnson will attack puts his shot up not good chip up not good and rebounded by Walton good effort by yeah. Keaton Johnson just couldn't finish Walton and gets his hands pulled back and there'll be a foul on Johnson Well, and I like it. Kerwin Walton that time attacking the basket, taking contact. He's an excellent free throw shooter. The other thing, too, John, is you get a chance to rest a little bit, too. It's kind of a frantic pace. You get to the free throw line, you get good looks, build your rhythm up, three points, and you also get a chance to rest and set your defense, too. First one good. Yeah. This they are, is, they are in the double bonus yeah. the rest of the way. Yeah. 11 minutes left. I'll tell you, this is where Prince Oligby... You know he's only a sophomore. You know, with Chet Holmgren out, with Jalen Suggs with foul trouble, this is where they need him to establish his athleticism, his dominance on the offensive end. They need him being aggressive. Johnson with the basketball. One dribble and then hands it off to a Ligby. Salisbury back out top to Smith. Full drive, let's pass it to the lane, intercepted. Elvis Najee oh, oh. gets undercut hard oh. by Johnson. And they're going to call that an intentional foul. And Keaton Johnson. I, I don't think he uh, meant to do it. Uh, I mean, he did. That's, I mean, that's he did. scary. You're right. I, you know, he yeah, just, I think he was trying to get out of the way and cause him, but it yeah. definitely the way the foul was executed, yeah. definitely it, the right call. And it it looked like he was lowering his shoulder almost to get lower on it, too, and probably looked worse than it certainly intended to be, but that, that's scary. Anytime someone leaves their feet and gets undercut, you just you get, you hold your breath. Free throw up and in for Najee. 
Well, this is big because it's going to give him two free throws. It's going to allow them to keep possession of the ball as well. It's, it's so funny how this game, John, especially at the high school level, such a game of momentum. It, you know, all of a sudden Hopkins right back in this. Jalen Suggs on the bench with foul trouble. You got a two-point game. Kerwin Walton starting to heat up a little bit. In the double bonus the rest of the way. Johnson has picked up his fourth, and Suggs is back in. Yeah. So Suggs and Johnson both on the floor with four fouls here. Yeah. Hopkins has made it a game here. Back to within two. The momentum going their way. See how the Red Hawks respond. Tremel almost had it stolen by Smith. Tremel, little floater, not good, and rebounded by Suggs. Oh, nice Quick throw. outlet to yeah. Keaton Johnson, who finishes with a layup. What a beautiful play. How about play. those two yep. seniors? Yep. Great rebound almost before he hit the ground. He threw that ball ahead. Beautiful outlet pass, and Keaton Johnson gets a layup. Walton for three yeah. hits. Oh, that's what big players do, John. He might have struggled in the first half, but he's come to play here in the second half. Davis three not good ball knocked out of bounds off the of Ligby. And he's shooting with a little bit more arc there. You see how much I, I thought his shot was a little flat in the first half. He's getting his legs underneath him. And another clean look here, John. And Hopkins oh. in the lead. No, that's, that's why he's getting recruited by a lot of the best basketball schools in the country. And he's starting to feel it. I think getting him getting to that free throw line, getting that rhythm, seeing the ball go in, and that's what, three in a row now, I think, in the second half. He's exploded. Yeah, that was just a miscommunication. You see Donovan Smith got caught in the screen and did not step up. And Kerwin Walden starting to feel it. And his teammates know it. The crowd knows it. And how about Hopkins battling back now with a two-point lead? There's been a lot of talk about Minnehaha Academy and the great collection of athletes. Are they one of the great teams in Minnesota basketball history? Here was one at Hopkins back in 2008-2009. Royce White and a host of Division I players undefeated 31-0 on the season. They had four guys went D1 for basketball and one Marcus Williams went D1 for football. Played in the NFL. Not that Marcus Williams is with the Saints, but finished his NFL career last year with the, the Bears. And uh, Raymond Cowles, Mike Brohammer, just a great collection of talents. And 31-0 uh, and 0 on the season. And uh, Royce White here tonight to enjoy yeah. the Hopkins Royals. And that 2009 team that was so good. Yep. Trent Lockett was the other player on the team went to Arizona State to play. Oh, uh, you just 2009, they, they Look at that! Look at that year they had all the state state championships that just that single year alone. But I'll tell you, they've had some great teams even back to when I was in high school. And Jared Nunes and Steve Hoffert and some great teams. Great, uh, you know, Chris Humphreys of course playing here. So they they've had talent almost every year. Oh, Suggs up with the shot in and a foul. Trying to get his team fired up. Oh, nice cut. You can see they're putting Suggs down in the post, trying to let him go to work maybe before any help defense can come. And again, with his strength as a guard at six foot five, if you're going to follow him, you you got to make sure he does not get that shot off. He's had a number of three-point play opportunities tonight. Fouls on Shrake, his fourth. He'll go to the bench. 24 points now in the game for Suggs. We are tied. At 61, as we near the midway point of the second half, Hopkins Minnehaha Academy tonight on CCX. John Jacobson, oh. Ryan Iverson, oh. and the finish by Walton. Oh my goodness! Another huge play for Hopkins has their fans up on their feet. Suggs for three, not good, and he gets fouled by White, and he'll shoot three. Well, we might have a new play of the week. <laughs> I think they're just the move there. Look at that behind the back. Puts the ball in front. No help defense. And we've seen Kerwin Walton bang a couple of threes here in the second half. A little elevation and the finish. Look at the crowd in the background. It's a, no a high number of dunks for a high school basketball game, John. Suggs misses another free throw. 
Well, how about Lance Johnson at halftime saying limit the turnovers, make free throws. And we've seen still the turnovers continuing here in the second half, and we've seen the missed free throws continue. And that's why we have uh, a one-point game in Hopkins' favor right now. He made his first five, but just two of his last seven yeah. from the line. Trying to make a three for eight here on this three-point free throw trip to the line. Not good, but they got the rebound. Davis just missed and rebounded by Walton. Uh, and right. Walton has come to play here in yeah, the second yeah. half. I come give him a ball screen. I try to free him up on the screen if I can. You want to keep Kerwin Walton feeling it. 63-62 Hopkins. There you go. Now you got the height there. A little step back. Yeah. Two is good. I keep going to that switch. If I can get Donovan Smith only at five foot ten on him, he's just got the length to shoot over him like he did there. 18 second half points oh. and Suggs answers with a huge jam. Oh. Maybe the biggest dunk of the night. All right, we have another play for top player of the week. <laughs> he's got 27 points, 65, 64. Uh, you want your biggest players making the biggest plays here. White down low, nice right. job waiting for the defender to go by and mirror with his first basket. You see him collect himself there, John, before I let the defender fly, able to finish. Suggs dump off. Johnson wasn't looking for it. Oh. And then gets his hand up in the air to create the steal. What a play by Suggs defensively. Open three on the wing. Spins out. And the rebound to White. You see how high he got on that deflection? That was an athletic play. And you can feel the energy, the attention to detail, the collective breath here of everyone in the crowd. It picked up a level. Yeah, the intensity yeah, here in the yeah. second half completely different from the first half. Right. Here's Tremble. Suggs went for the steal, didn't get it. Back into the middle, Najee can't get it to go. Ligby affected just enough of that shot. Here's Johnson. Nice adjustment by oh. Johnson and then draws the contact and go to the line for two. Yeah, let's watch this electric dunk. A left to right crossover. And look at him go up and finish. A little power on that one, too. He's fired up. Boom, nice, nice crossover baseline. And then you got to have that strength added to that dunk. That's what made that one special. Johnson to the line for two. At last Hopkins foul on Xavier White. This is four. Free throw yeah. not good. Suggs a little cut. And he had to come to the bench to get that tended to. Well, that's the downfall, being able to bang it so hard. You, sometimes you'll get a cut on that wrist or, or hand. Second free throw. Boy, the missed free throws yeah. continue to be a bugaboo oh. tonight, but they get the offensive rebound and they finish. So they end up with two in the possession yeah. anyway as Davis follows up. Well, that's one where Najee, if you're going to just go out of bounds and take the, the turnover to, to throw it there and leave it. Oh, nice split. Walton, a little oh, pull wow. off the glass up and in. Has he been amazing or what in the second half? 20 second yeah. half points for Kerwin Walton. Well, I told you at halftime if Hopkins was going to have a chance to win this. He had to be in the 20s or the high teens, and he's come out and done that. Suggs, step back three. Off the mark, Walton rebounds. Looks up court, got players on each wing. Najee goes up, and Suggs gets up and gets the block. Suggs at the other end. Shot won't go down and rebounded by Tremel. Suggs continuing to shake off that thumb that I think is really bothering him. Oh, oh a little fake oh. by Najee and then couldn't finish. Oh. Follow up, that wouldn't go. And Davis rebounds. Of course, Novak, I think he wanted that to be the fifth foul on Suggs. A timeout for Minnehaha Academy. I got a tend, I think, to Jalen Suggs' thumb there. Look at it again. <laughs> Look at this ball fake. Great fake there. That's just a little soft touch. And 
Uh, I thought right there might have been number five. That's a that's a tricky play. Red Hawks lucky that that wasn't foul number five on Jalen Suggs. <laughs> what, what do we have on that last play that you like to say? All jelly, no a toast. A lot of jelly, but no <laughs> toast there. Great ball thing <laughs> by Elvis. Yeah, the intensity in the last, I'd say, two and a half, three minutes really picking up where you almost feel like every possession is, is good. Something exciting is going to happen. We've seen a number of great dunks tonight, but some great blocks as well. What a fun game. This is the one here. Jalen Suggs goes up. That's a really, I mean, you got to have guts there when you got four fouls like that to go up and be able to block that without getting in the body. And just couldn't yep. finish at the other end on Tremble. Yep. And you can see him looking at his uh, thumb that Hopkins trainer Scott Westerman now has come over to the uh, bench. And they get uh, it's a ring finger, not the thumb. He's kind of shaking that hand, definitely. I, we assume from that dunk. How about, how about Suggs though coming back yeah. into the game what three four minutes ago with yeah. the four fouls yeah. continuing to play aggressively now Hopkins felt perhaps he committed a foul the defensive end yeah. the last trip but he has not really changed his game much. I like Lance Johnson putting him in the game there's a great steal too by Dremel. Lead pass ahead open three oh. ball in the corner. Oh. And it's Cornell Richardson yeah. with his. First three tonight. He's got seven points, and that's a huge yeah. one. Hopkins are the biggest lead of the night for them tonight at six. They trail by ten early yeah. in the second half. How about Tremble, the defensive end, and then the great pass too to Richardson. Suggs up, man. He gets a blocking foul on Najee. He'll go to the line for two. Great pass ahead, and Richardson with a guy right in his face, too, able to hit the three. And watch his teammates behind him. They are fired up. Starting to believe that they can win this basketball game. So it's first one up. Yeah. Not good. Boy, he has struggled from the. I can see that finger's just bothering him. I mean, it's really affecting him. I don't know if it's so much the hand or the wrist. You can see it, Ryan, as he's trying to shake it off there. Second one, though, he knocks down. 72 67, just over five minutes to go. Kerwin Walton, what a half he has had for Hopkins. Oh, nice pass. Finds the open player. Tremel thought about the three, but Suggs was right there. Richardson picks up his dribble. Ah, to Gray. Oh. Gets by his defender and lays this one in. What a great move that time by Gray. He had a couple of great little pivots and goals, and he went and nailed that. Suggs hits the three, and he's fouled. Chance for a four-point play as he's fouled by Andre Gray. Thirty one points now for Suggs. Oh, that's a big answer that four points that could cut this lead to three after all the momentum of going to the Hopkins side. I'm going to say Jalen Suggs struggling tonight from the three point line. That was a good three or four feet behind the three point line able to take contact and finish. Boy how big could this play be yeah. in this game if he's able to convert does and makes it a four point play and now it's right back to a three point game again. Four thirty five to go off the hands of Walton turnover for Hopkins. One possession game. Suggs to Smith on the wing. 
Smith will drive, will pull up shot. Too strong. And a rebound to Richardson. Ahead to Shrake. Puts it up and in. Oh, good throw ahead by Richardson. Great defense, too, there to be able to defend that without falling. And Shrake gets out ahead of the field. No one sucks with four fouls. Probably wasn't going to challenge it, able to get the basket. Whistle and a foul it will be on Shrake. That'll be his fifth. He and Suggs got tangled up there, and Shrake will foul out and not happy about the call. And Suggs will go to the line for two. Oh, yeah, wow. boy, it was, wow. wasn't a lot there. That's not a foul. It, was a, it would have been a no call. Yep. One and one, not two shots here for Suggs. And he earns the bonus. Now he's hit his last three free throws now. 34 points for Jalen Suggs. 76-73 Hopkins with 340 to go. Walton thought about the three, got to man up in the air, and Suggs gets the block on Walton. Back comes Minnehaha. Davis out on the wing, trying to get it, and it's off the hands of Watson Salisbury, and out of bounds. Turnover for Minnehaha. That's another one of those unforced, unnecessary turnovers, playing too fast. I'll tell you, that was a great shot fake by Walton, but a nice contest that time by Suggs. And again, risky with those four fouls, but He's got the length and the size to do it. That was a great, great contest. Here's Gray out top. Backs off now. Four and a half court with three minutes to go. Gray spins back out to Walton. I think Kerwin likes this matchup, feeling like he might have the length, size, and the quickness on that matchup. Richardson gets it back into the hands of Walden and he gets fouled. Either Johnson or Suggs, it'll be on Johnson. That'll be his fifth. I think they're lucky to get that on Johnson. That looked like Suggs might have reached in on that drive. So Chase Carter will check back in with Caden Johnson following out with two points. Walton five out of six from the free throw line here in the second half has 22 points 20 of them coming yep. after halftime. Well and I like what he did there he got the matchup on Johnson and, and using his quickness. I think when he's when he saw a Ligby off of him is when he's kind of taken over this game. I think that length of a Ligby has bothered him on his shot. Got to the free throw got some rhythm going hit those threes now he's driving to the basket really showing the whole complete offensive repertoire in the second half. Second free throw also good. Donovan Smith back in. And out goes Watson Salisbury. 78-73. Hopkins by five. We're going to go come over and talk with Coach Johnson, uh, I think they're seeing that there's blood, I think, yeah. on the uniform of Suggs, which has been there for a while. Well, we'll play on. <laughs> well, I like that. It looked like they almost asked Coach Novak if he was fine with it. And as a competitor, he said, absolutely. You don't want to take the, best, the other team's best players out of the game. So I, I love that right there. Smith three. 
Not good. And they fight for the rebound. It comes down into the hands of Richardson. Front court to Walton. On about the three. No hole up. And now it'll pop up three. Not good. Rebounded by Suggs. Always eyes up court for Suggs. Almost too high for Smith, but he corrals it and then lost it out of bounds. And again, turnovers, John. And that's where you'd like to see Jalen Suggs keep that basketball and, and put it in his hands to make a play. And again, you love the unselfishness, but that's where you want the ball in your best player's hands making those decisions. Just over two minutes to go, and Suggs comes up with a steal. To the basket, off the glass, up and in. 36 for Suggs, they're back to within three. Oh, great defensive play, playing the passing lanes, and then how about that great body control and the spin on the finish. Tremel into the hands of Gray. 140 to play in the second half. Gray will pull up from two, not good. Rebound to Chase Carter. Not a smart shot right there. You don't want to take a contested two. Suggs for the tie up and in. 78 all with 1.15 to go. Richardson, floater oh. up and in answers. Well, How about that? A little hesitation between his legs and he gets the floater off the backboard. And back and forth we go. A minute to go, 80 to 78. Suggs spins, gets tied up. Oh, and a foul on Richardson. Got a little bit of his arm. Commits the foul and will send Suggs back to the line for two as they are now in the double bonus. Watch this pull. Again, deep. He almost shoots better deep, the deeper he is. And Richardson there, great left to right crossover and then the kiss, kiss off the backboard. Back and forth we go, big shot after big shot, really by both teams. First free throw up and in. 40 points for Jalen Suggs. Second one also good. They have come back late oh, here in the last minute. Oh, and they oh. lost it out of bounds. Oh, my goodness. Najee and Richardson didn't huh. communicate, and they lost the ball out of bounds, and it's back to the Red Hawks. Oh. Wow. Look at it again. Oh, oh that's, yeah, just yeah. lost by Richardson. I think he was just starting to look up yeah. four. That's attention to details. But how many times do you do that play and you don't think anything of it? Here we go. Let's see what Minnehaha Academy does. Tied at 80. 55 seconds to go. Suggs gives it up on the wing. Now it's Davis with it. Handing back out to Suggs with under 40 to go. Hold for one. I, I would run a second defender at him, make him try to give it up. Yeah, if you can, you want to hold for one here, but absolutely, you want to. Timeout, Minnehaha Academy. You know, I always go back, John, to Chicago and Utah. You never want to let Michael Jordan beat you, right? And, and same thing at this level. You want to, I would run a second, a third guy at Jalen Suggs. He's got over half of their points tonight. I make someone else beat me. I do not want to allow him the opportunity to beat me. Well, I hope you haven't been disappointed by tonight's oh, game. We didn't, we didn't get to see Chet Holmgren play, but boy, what a basketball game we've had. It's really, it's had everything. You've had star power. You've had great dunks. You've had great defense. You've had outside shooting, some great moves off the dribble transition. You've had a little of everything, and this is, this, you couldn't ask for anything more than this. Yeah, I think if you're Minnehaha Academy, you want to run this down to about 10 seconds and get Jalen Suggs a chance of driving at the basket. He's so quick, so long, so athletic and strong. That's why I run two guys at him and force him to try to give the ball up. And if you get beat by someone else, then 
so be it. You don't want to give star players a chance to beat you at the end of a game. Here we go. 26.2 seconds to go. Keep an eye on that. He caught that at 25 seconds in the backcourt. Beats the 10 second call. He's into the front court. Down to 15 to go. Jalen Suggs with 10. He'll throw a deep three. A back iron not good. Rebounded by Hopkins. Go. Walton, four seconds. Spins at midcourt. Ball tipped away of overtime. Wow. A Ligby gets up and gets the block. <laughs> On Walden, it would have been a tough shot even if he had a clear one from there. And we will play overtime. That's all right. Two things there, John. <laughs> I think I think both star players let the other team off the hook. Jalen Suggs pulling from, you know, 10 feet behind the three-point line. But then Kurt Walden, almost like he wasn't sure how much time was left or what the score was, kind of paused for a second or two. He could have pushed it, I think, and got a better shot than that. So... That's all right. We're going to overtime. Keep in mind, Jalen Suggs played the last nine minutes of overtime with four fouls. And I, I love the call by Lance Johnson getting him into that game, and that's the reason why this game is tied now. But why not four more minutes? <laughs> Jalen Suggs, 41 points for Minnehaha Academy. Isaiah Davis with 13. No one else in double figures for them for... Hopkins, Kerwin Walton with 24 points, 22 of them in the second half, 19 for Jalen Tremel. And no one else in double figures for Hopkins tonight. Well, both Tremel and Walton kind of switch in halves. Tremel with the big scoring first half and Walton there with the big scoring second half. So I always think the, the, the first minute of overtime is really big. Whoever can get that initial lead and then turnovers, I think whoever takes care of the basketball here is going to win this game. Let's take a look at some of what Kerwin Walton has done here in the second half tonight, Ryan Iverson. Oh, and I thought he got to the free throw line there. You can see he had a stretch here where he made about four three-pointers. That was a great move behind the back. Finishes with the two-hand flush. And we're just one of many really athletic plays we've seen tonight. He helped lead Hopkins back from a 10-point second-half deficit. Had a five-point lead, though, Ryan, with yep. 205 to go. Hopkins did, and they, they couldn't well, hold it. Minnie High came back. I thought they took a couple of really early, unnecessary shots, right? You want to take the, some clock off there. They were in the double bonus, maybe force Minnehaha to have to foul them. Instead, you gave Jalen Suggs an opportunity to, to tie this game. Najee and a Ligby to tip it off here in overtime. Four minutes to a winner, and it is Hopkins with the first possession. Walton backs it out. Richardson out on the wing, drives on Davis. Nice dish for oh, Walton. No. Oh. oh, and he missed it. Follow-up, though, is good. Heck of a play by Richardson. Great drive using his quickness. And Walton there, almost probably the easiest look he got. I think he even surprised how open he was, but able to finish with the offensive rebound there. First possession in the overtime for Minnehaha now. Suggs gives it up on the pass to the wing, back to Davis to Suggs. Walton got out on him and didn't try to put up the three. Smith will only be right wing with Richardson on him. Ligby, they swing it right side to Suggs. Trying to go down low to Davis and he gets fouled. Coming over defensively was Merritt commits the foul. A little late trying to yep. close out and then two free throws coming for Minnehaha Academy and Isaiah Davis. Yeah, and I think over aggressive on the help too, right? I mean, you want to make Carter have to beat you and make him a nice move. Come over, just get your hands up and be there. Yeah, excuse me, Chris Carter at the line here. Hasn't been to the free throw line tonight. And first one off. And two points in the first half. But if Minnehaha 
somehow does lose this game, I think they're going to look back to their free throw numbers and, and know that they left a ton of points and opportunity on that free throw line. Missed them both. Carter unable to convert. Hopkins still with a two point lead in the basketball. Back and sucks. Fouls out. Trying to knock the ball away from Treble, instead commits the foul. Reluctant to give up the basketball, and they'll go to the bench. Oh, yeah, that's a foul. So a warning for delay of game, still not on the bench. Coach Johnson trying to get him over to the bench. Sugg still pleading his case after the whistle, but he fouls out with 41 points. Oh, these are big free throws for Trimmel. Got the momentum now with Suggs out of the game. You're up two. You got to be able to knock these in. Give yourself a little bit of a cushion here. First one up and in. Trimble 16 points in the first half really helped keep Hopkins yep. in the game when Walton yep. was uh, very quiet offensively. No, I agree. I think his scoring in that first half was was absolutely huge. Makes them both yep. here, and he's got 21 in the game. Two possession game now, and Suggs out for Minnehaha Academy along with Johnson. Where does the scoring come from here yeah. for Minnehaha Academy? And a turnover. And Walton gets the steal in the paint for Hopkins. And this is where I think Hopkins learned from the end of regulation. It's okay to take a little bit of time here and get a good shot. Walton almost lost it. Najee across. Richardson in the corner. And he gets fouled by Ligby. And Richardson will go to the line for two. That's where being in that double bonus is really nice at this time because now you drive any little handfall, you get to shoot two. And Hopkins shot the ball very, very effectively tonight from the free throw line. First one up and in for Cornell Richardson. Eighty-five, eighty. Hopkins here in OT. Red Hawks have yet to score in the overtime. Second one good. So they've knocked down four free throws yep. in their last two possessions. Smith, three, way off and rebounded by Walton. Under two minutes to go. Ball into the hands of Walton. Back it off here for Richardson. And back to Kerwin Walton. They'll just run more clock here. 135 to go. And pass behind the back of Merritt, but knocked out by Minnehaha. So you know, and, and I, not a turnover. And don't you think, John, if they had played this game, kind of possession at the end of regulation, they probably would have ended up winning in regulation. But forcing some time, you're going to end up forcing Minnehaha Academy to have to follow you. One twenty-five to go, and there's a foul. And that'll be the fifth on Chase Carter. So the sophomore will foul out with two points. Picked up three fouls in quick succession. In the second half, it forced him to the bench, and now he'll come and sit down one final time. Trent Finney gets ready to come in for him. In and out for Richardson. A rare miss for Hopkins at the free throw line, too. Cornell Richardson misses both. 
So just a two possession game still. 120 to go. Well kicked by Hopkins. Oh, we get a foul call. Leon Tremel. And slow to get up is a Ligby. So he will go to the line for two. He is tonight two of four from the free throw line. Quite night of scoring, just eight points. Yeah, I thought with, with, with Suggs in foul trouble when he sat out, and especially here in overtime when he did foul out, these are chances for Ligby to really kind of take that next step as an offensive player to really look to get his own shot. He just hasn't been that aggressive offensively tonight. Thought he had a great first half defensively, especially against against Walton. His length and strength did a really nice job, but offensively for Minnehaha Academy, I think to to win a state championship, they're going to need his scoring at some point in the season. They have missed 19 free throws tonight. He'd get the second one here. 86-81 Hopkins. Oh, a great move to get to the front court. Out of the hands of Tremel and Andre Gray, and he gets fouled by Smith. Four and Donovan Smith. Andre Gray to the line for two. He had eight points tonight. None more memorable than that first yeah. half dunk he had. Yeah, that was that was that might have been the dunk of the night. That because it was in the half court, and he just took off out of nowhere, got really high. I thought Kerwin Walton's, when he had the behind the back with the two-hand dunk, was beautiful. Suggs had, had a couple of nice ones. It's uh, It's been a very athletic night filled with dunks. Still a two-possession game, one out of two on the free throw. Smith for three, banked it, not good. Loose ball, out of bounds. Off Minnehaha, it's Hopkins basketball. 55.8 seconds to go. So Hopkins kind of left the door open here, but Minnehaha unable to convert. Into the hands of Gray. Ball deflected. And a turnover for Hopkins. Ball knocked out of bounds by Walton, but it will be Minnehaha basketball. So they give it back to the Red Hawks. Still have a shot here. 47 seconds to go. Trailing by six. Good defense there in the backcourt by the Red Hawks. See what they can do offensively here. Finney. Into the hands of the Ligby with 40 seconds to go. Deep three for Prince of Ligby. Well short. Rebounded though by Finney. Corner three. That comes out. Rebound by Ligby underneath. That won't go. And a rebound by Walton. And he's fouled. And that may about do it tonight. I got to figure six points. You're sending Walton to the free throw line. Excellent free throw shooter. And I'll tell you what, Hopkins fought tonight. It, after that first half and, and all the foul trouble they had and, and Walton not really getting it going, they never quit. They kept fighting and fighting. And of course, when Suggs went out with foul trouble, they took advantage of that and really flipped the script here in the second half and overtime. And, that young man at the free throw line is a big part of the current Walton with a huge overtime in second half. 27 points for Walton. Smith into the front court, lobs it down low and finish for Isaiah Davis. And a timeout taken with 19 seconds left, 88-83. Thirty second timeout for Hopkins. A reminder of our CCX Sports Play of the Week. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A of Maple Grove. Go to our website at ccxmedia.org. Click on the Sports tab. Go to Play of the Week and vote for your favorites from the past week. Paige Beckers will probably be a Play of the Week candidate at some, some point, point this season, yeah. I'm guessing. Well, this probably wouldn't be a good week because I think all of our, our options are going to come from this game. <laughs> <laughs> Not too many games where you got seven, eight dunks throughout the course of a game and Four or five of them, just spectacular. Yeah, 88-83 Hopkins, 
need to take care of the basketball here late. Had a turnover a yeah, moment that, ago. And don't you, if you're Coach Novak, you, you got to be impressed with the effort your kids played at, too. Inbound comes to Gray, and he gets fouled by Davis. Yeah, really fought through some yep. adversity early mm -hmm. in that second half, and it looked like it might go Minnehaha's way for good yep. when they were down 10. And, and you just wondered, you, you knew with all the firepower, even with, with Chet Holmgren out of the game, you knew Minnehaha was going to score. And you wondered, especially once Kerr and Wilton started, you know, not struggling there in the, in the first half, where the scoring was going to come from. But they had players step up, and Walton, of course, stepped up, and this was an ultimate team win. Oh. Gray missed them both, and then commits the foul, trying to hit the rebound from Finney. What the and heck? gives uh, the Red Hawks oh. another opportunity here. That's about the worst thing you could you could want to <laughs> right. do. Up five, you miss the free throw, and then you commit a foul. So now you're putting them double bonus and a chance to make this a one possession game. That was not a smart smart play at all by Andre Gray. Trent Finney will go to the line for two. Missed two free throws in the first half. There's two points tonight. I'm not sure what the discussion here is about. If they thought too much time came off the clock. No, they didn't put another second up there. 16.8. Now Finney with a chance to take advantage here for Minnehaha Academy and hits the first one. 88-84. Oh, this is big. He makes this. They're allowed, you know, obviously the clock stopped. You can set a press up. If you're able to get a turnover, you're only one possession down. So that that was a huge, huge mistake that time by Andre Gray. We'll see if the Red Hawks can capitalize on it. Second one also good. 88-85. 16.8 to go. Inbound to Tremble who gets fouled. So it'll come down to free throws. You know, Gray missed two a moment ago. Tremble can convert here. You really put the pressure on the Red Hawks. Tremble tonight, two of two and from the free throw line. Both came here in overtime. Another clock discussion, or not sure what the officials are going to gather up here. Unlike college or the NBA, there's no, they can't come to our monitor. It's not within the rules that they could come and, and check the time. Well, it was so it's six, up to the referee's yeah. discretion. I think the clock's about right, John. Yeah, I think so too. Off after that made free throw, so I, I don't think there's a discrepancy there. I don't know if it was wondering. Who the foul was on, maybe, or, or what, but pretty straightforward. Trumbull's had some time to think about it, now steps yeah. to the line. Yeah. First one up and in. That's big. You get that first one, now you're up two possessions. That's huge. If you're Hopkins right now, no fouls. You do not want to foul on a three-point shot. Challenge, but stay away and do not foul. Second one also good. Two big free throws right there. Pass intercepted by Hopkins. Walton gets fouled with eight seconds to go. That should seal it. Kerwin Walton to the free throw line. That is sealed here for Hopkins. His 28th point. Come 
26 of those coming in the second half and overtime. Second one also good. I would have told you he was going to end up with 28 or 29 after that first half. He would not have believed it. So big time response by the defending state champions at Class 4A and a big home win too. They get their fourth win of the season. Second loss of the year to the Red Hawks, or for the Red Hawks. They also lost to Creighton Durham Hall this season. And then they go down tonight in overtime, 92 to 85. What entertainment though, oh, huh? What a great game. Well played, great effort, great atmosphere. Some unbelievable athletes and players in the court. And a lot of fun to call, John. I don't know if we can top that one. That's going to be that's yeah. going to be tough. We'll take a break. Ryan's going to hear from a couple of the Royals in a moment. Hopkins outscoring Minnehaha 12-5 there in the overtime, and they win it 92 to 85. We will take a break. We'll come back. We'll wrap things up from the Lindenberg Center on CCX after this timeout. These hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden hose defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. Ninety-two, eighty-five. Hopkins wins it over Minnehaha Academy. Back court side we go. Ryan Iverson. All right, I'm with Jalen Tremel. Jalen came into this game averaging four points on the year. He ended up with 23. Had a monstrous first half. What happened there? You know, I know Minnehaha is a good team. I know we're gonna have to come out, play hard. I just knew coming off the bench, I was gonna have to come off with energy. So I just came in trying to do my part, get stops, and that's what we did as a team. Everybody was getting stops, playing hard. Well, I thought in the, in the first half, Kerwin Walton obviously struggled, only had two points. Without your scoring and your playmaking, this game maybe, maybe gets out of hand there in the first half. How important was it to you to provide that spark and especially the scoring? Um, you know, like I said, just trying to do my part, but knowing Kerwin's off, you know, somebody got to step up. So stepping up on defense turned into my – getting into my offense, getting into, you know, my shots, my fast break layups and stuff. So really defense coming off – playing hard on defense. So tonight you guys are down 10 in the second half there. What are you guys saying to each other to know that you can get back in that game? Stay solid, to be honest. Like, just staying solid, staying in front. We know, like, a game can change at any time. Coach Novak always tells us that a game can change at any time. So always play hard, you know, just, just play hard. You know. Well, and you guys certainly played hard. I thought defensively you challenged everything at the rim tonight. Nothing easy. What is it like playing defense against a team like that that's loaded with a lot of really talented players, especially offensively? Um, it's tough, but like I said, like just playing hard, we always got to play hard. We gonna, Teams like that, you play hard with them, they're going to, you know, not backing down, just stepping up to the challenge and stuff, they're going to fold. So you guys are 4-2 and two now. How big is this win propelling you forward here for the rest of the season? Um, well, looking, our defense was good, so we got, a, we got a lot of work on offense and defense still, but looking back, it's going to be good film to watch, learning from it, and moving on. Well, congrats on a wonderful game. 23 points, big defensively as well, and a come-from-behind win. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, back to you, John. All right, thanks very much. Thanks for uh, Jalen Tremble for taking some time with us tonight. Great basketball tonight here on CCX. Hope you have enjoyed uh, all of our telecasts tonight. Hopkins defeats Minnehaha Academy 92-85 in overtime. For all of our terrific crew and for Ryan Iverson, I'm John Jacobson. Thanks so much for watching High School Boys Basketball tonight on CCX Sports.